Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu to the brothers and sisters here and also those who are uh, listening to us digitally. Um, so, first of all, we have to be, be grateful to Allah Ta'ala for these opportunities. Uh, the little that we do, may He count it for us when we, with the hour or the day that we need it most. So I want to first of all, uh, Alhamdulillah for this opportunity and thank you the brothers of this center uh, for, the, uh, for the opportunity and for the occasion for us to come in and present to this community. And throughout the conversation we have tonight, inshallah you'll hear why so many of us are driven or so many of us are feeling to be so close to this project. So let me begin. Okay, I think you can still hear me, right? Jazakallah khairan. Uh, so as I said, uh, this is about Rahma Community Center, RCC. To give you a little more insight into why RCC. Can you work on the... <laughs> Anyways, while well, the signal comes back. Um, RCC, as the name is chosen, was chosen uh, by the brothers and sisters uh, of this effort, it is literally driven from the eye of Qur'an. All of us are familiar with this beautiful ayah. The ayah is, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And the close translation says, We have sent you, O Prophet Allah, this is referring to Muhammad وسلم, only as a mercy for the world. And this is 2107. So we chose this name. Why did we choose it? So simply put, it really encompassed what the visionaries had imagined. We are here for a very short time. In that time that we have, some of us 20, 30, some of us two days, some of us 70 years, 80 years, 100 years, if we, leave, if we live our life in the manner that Allah is pleased with us, Alhamdulillah, we are the winners. And who is better than any one of us Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had that model. He was that model. Prior to uh, gaining the Risala, he was known as one of those individuals. He was all, always helping. He was always in the beck and call of anybody who would need him. He was known as al Siddiq because of the things that he did. He was trustworthy. So he was always in the khidma and help and service of his community. So knowing this, this word from the, this verse from the Quran, we felt, the, the, the visionaries of this project felt that this really suited um, our efforts. So that's why they chose the name Rahma Community Center. And, I, and I, this title says Glad Tidings, it's, it fits so well. Um, SubhanAllah, we see it in the Quran, we see it in the Quran that so many places Allah Ta'ala gives this small sentence glad tiding to those for whatever things they did so this is our remembrance of those brothers and sisters and glad gave them glad tidings that they did something like this literally a few years back they got together and decided that we should be acting the way the prophet sallallahu alaihi did we should be leaving something as an inheritance for those behind us, our grandkids, or even those who don't even know us. They won't, they won't know us. Most of us that are alive today, in 100 years, nobody will even know our names. But our legacy, inshallah, would live, as the Prophet's legacy is now be, uh, live, lived on. So these brothers really got together uh, with the sisters and discussed what is one way to do what we need to do. How is it, how do you decipher, how do you, how do you bring this rahmah to the rest of the community. At that point, we were just thinking about Contra Costa, just the local neighborhood. But Alhamdulillah, their vision, what they had in mind, Allah Ta'ala blessed it. Blessed it in so many ways. Throughout tonight in, the, in our discussions, we're gonna hear uh, sentiments, we're gonna hear stories of how each stage of, these, of this project, there are blessings from Allah Ta'ala that came out of nowhere. And Alhamdulillah, the project is moving on. So. To move forward, um, I think that side is working, so inshallah will be good, um, so you can see. So Allah Ta'ala, the first step was, with His blessing, we were able to 
purchase a 14 plus acre plot of land. Most of us who live in the Bay Area know facts of land prices and availability is just, it's a daunting task for anybody, especially those established uh, communities like MCC, like MCA, um, other uh, centers around the Bay Area. So land is a precious commodity. So these visionaries had this image, how do we do service and how do we bring in so many different types of service um, and have the kind of land, the piece of land, or the uh, vastness of this piece of land so that it could serve and be able to bring all these uh, goals to reality. So Alhamdulillah, this is a 14-acre land, uh, zoned for general commercial. Um, this is right next to the freeway, 160 and Highway 4 in that junction, in that corner. Uh, literally, it's about 1.7 miles from BART stop. So Alhamdulillah, this is, uh, this is one of the blessings of having um, uh, brothers be able to just get off the BART, have a visit uh, the center, and then be on their way uh, to their families. Moving to the next slide is the vision and mission statement. Um, and again, going back to our visionaries, to the brothers and sisters who were involved in this effort, they really took what the Prophet ﷺ did and what was ordered to him in his earlier days in Medina. He came, we all know it all too well, the first statements out of his mouth, become brothers, feed one another. That bond, creation of that bond between communities, that's how it started. So Alhamdulillah, with this vision, that's what these uh, brothers and sisters from the early days said, that our, our vision should be mercy to all. And that has been our goal, and based on that goal, based on that vision, Alhamdulillah, everything that this project touches has that in the foresight. Mission, okay, visions are wonderful, but if you can't implement, and if you can't work at it, and if you can't bring it to reality, then um, it's just a pie in the sky. So the mission became just as important. And Alhamdulillah, since its inception, we have brothers and sisters who have been dedicated to this cause. Um, literally hours on Zoom calls, of visits. Uh, Alhamdulillah, this project has uh, committees. Uh, we have an engineering subcommittee that meets on Sunday mornings. We have um, uh, the, board of, uh, the board, executive board that meets every uh, Tuesday or Wednesday evenings for an hour. And this has been going on for, for years now, discussing all these efforts so to make sure that this mission becomes a reality. So this is really tangible, and we're not just talking, we are also walking and doing what is expected so that we can see the reality of these, um, hopefully in our time, if not for our children. The next slide talks about services. As I said in the beginning, um, many of the individuals who ever come across this project is really odd, and um, their hearts cling to it right away, and it was definitely for me and definitely for the majority of the board members. Um, for us, these services, uh, the list is long, but just to name a few, senior housing. Uh, many of us, I'm sure, have stories personal stories, friends' stories, neighbors' stories of our elderly, our grandparents, parents, uh, at ages of that really they, they, are, they, they get to a stage where they're not as mobile anymore. You know, they're, they're, they're done with their working life, they've raised their kids, everything's settled, but here they are with so much time, and the only salvation they have literally is that TV and that remote. And majority of them sit hours and hours on a sofa. Um, personally, I've experienced it. Um, for those who I have uh, befriended, um, those a lot older, I have some gray hair, <laughs> but those who have had a few years than me, um, just love the opportunity to be with us, just love the opportunity to be heard, to have a discussion with somebody. So senior housing is truly one of those. So this is what drove me uh, to this project. Um, community center. Like I said, it goes back, touches us to that uh, exact point. How many of our seniors, sisters, mothers, and um, um, even, it doesn't have to be seniors, other, uh, the youth, this, this project touches the youth and the elderly. There's really not a lot of things, that, a lot of, let's just say, positive things that they can do. There's a lot of things that TV can take your whole day away from you, but it's not positive. It's not in a way that pleases Allah. So, this center helps you with that. So these uh, community centers. Um, community garden, we have initiated 
a, a, a few gardening sessions. We currently have brothers who just love. We have a Saturday uh, classes um, at the site. Right, Fajr's prayed. We have Quran recitation, and before you know it, as soon as we're done, you know the salams are done. These individuals are on the on the on the grave. Uh, they are, uh, they, excuse me, the, the vineyard. They're. Uh, working on the raised gardens that they have set up. So this is something that brings pleasure to them. So Alhamdulillah, this is one of the other things. Obviously, K-12 stomach school. Um, I put my kids through North Star for many years. They graduated after eighth grade. I had no idea what to do after that. Uh, there was very, very few 12, 8 to 12 and beyond. I was stuck. So Alhamdulillah, we're thinking this. So a lot of this project is really answering the question, meeting the challenges, stepping forward for those demands that the Muslim communities, of, of, at least the San Francisco Bay Area has. And Alhamdulillah, I'm proud to be part of it and um, uh, be associated with this, a lot of these um, services. So the next step, obviously, I said the list is long, other services such as legal and medical clinics. Alhamdulillah, we, we know MCA offers uh, legal clinic, clinics. So many of our brothers and sisters are benefiting from that. So these are all um, uh, areas that we can help our community more. Uh, community services, activities, Dawah Center, um, just warms your heart every time you're at this masjid, somebody else takes your heart out. SubhanAllah. And this is all because of Dawah, because somebody, you know, went out there, spent the time with somebody and guided them. So Allah guides, but ultimately these centers are the, the, the source. Uh, mortuary services. Moving on to our next um, uh, uh, slideshow has to give you guys a picture of what we've been thinking about for a number of years. Uh, we've had many discussions amongst our, ourselves, many heated discussions. Hey, I, let's not put the school over here, let's put the gym over there. So this is what we are thinking, high level, uh, the image of the center. Um, we have thought about it over and over many times. Why not have the senior center here? Why have the, uh, the residents here? Uh, let's not have it too close uh, to the kids and play area because we don't want the seniors' afternoon nap to be disturbed. So all of these things are being considered with the board, with the designers, with the engineers, with the firms that we have hired. Um, so alhamdulillah, this is the image uh, we have in mind, the sort of the um, 3D vision of uh, the future campus. Um, you can see many of these uh, different items that I mentioned earlier. As mentioned there, the courtyard, the masjid, obviously, the gym, and uh, the associated square footage um, for each of those items. To move forward, again, I just wanted to give you guys a quick uh, glimpse of... Um, this, is a, this is a wonderful picture to see of an elderly couple at a window looking very happy. Uh, but mo some of us know the other side. I have personally visited, seen elderly in their rooms all day long, watching TV, falling asleep, watching TV. That is their day and nights for a number of years. So this is what drives me to this project. Those are, those are our visuals. Don't be afraid that you may be in that situation. I may be in that situation. I can't count on my kids taking care of me when I'm 70, 80 years old. So it's visions like these, it's brothers like these, it's sisters like these, who thought about these, that we need to have something that brings the respect, the care, the attention, and inshallah, those glimmering faces and happiness at the end. Inshallah, we're not worried about our end. Alhamdulillah, Allah Ta'ala has given us such comfort in our hearts that our, our end is inshallah will. Inshallah. We have said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Inshallah, with that, we will leave this world and our end will be good. But the few days that we have here, these projects, these goals, makes it less burdensome on others and more of a care for us. So Alhamdulillah, next to it is a retail store. This project, as I said, it touches every aspect of a well-functioning community. Um, obviously, majority of our centers really depend on, on the generosity of the members of the community, others outside the community to help these, these much needed services and centers function. But Alhamdulillah, the goal of these visionaries, the goal of these brothers and sisters, and I wanna mention one of them, 
Haji Seb, um, Abdul Qasim Panshiri, who's no longer with us, passed away just this year. Part of this vision. He, he, 80 or so years old, in the garden. We have pictures of him in the garden, on his knees, planting. Because he saw, in his mind, he knew what this was going to be. It wasn't going to be for him. It may not even be for his children. But he knew it was going to be generational. It was going to be a service that needed, demanded, and of course loved by Allah and blessed by Allah. So the retail spaces, the whole, the whole point of that is we want to make sure the center like these can function and stand up on their own two feet. So that we sort of walk away from this, um, depending on community memberships and uh, fundraising. JazakAllah Khair. So the next um, project status. Uh, Alhamdulillah, as I said, this project's been uh, uh, with us for a few years and there's a lot of efforts going on, a lot of us are involved. Um, so the first question I'm, I'm always asked um, is, uh, what's going on? What's the latest? <laughs> I mentioned last night um, in one of our fundraising a few years back, there was a mother of ours who literally given her gold bangles towards this cause. So a person like that needs to know. And so this is what this uh, slide is all about. So Alhamdulillah, the master plan, most of you guys know, especially for Munir who, who deals with this stuff. The city is brutal. When you go through entitlements, when you go through, just get a simple approval for something, they have 10,000 offices. And we have amongst us uh, in our board, in our de design committee, folks who work in the city. So they know the heartaches and, and the headaches. Um, so Alhamdulillah, uh, we're working with, with the, um, f towards the mat master plan to get the uh, uh, approval. Uh, in line one, you can see that there's a whole bunch of uh, just, I'll just call it bureaucracy, <laughs> but basically paperwork that needs to be done. It's legit, I'm sure it is, but, uh, but each of those have sub uh, departments and works and approvals that have to go through. Uh, just to name some of a few of those is geotech, uh, civil engineering, architectural, um, design and all that, traffic impact study, CEQA, uh, land survey. I think we just finished our land survey. Is that what it was? Easement? Yeah. So, and that, I think I, I asked for Hadi a few times, when is that going to get done? So we finally got it hung with that. <laughs> so these things are taking time. But uh, the second point is I really want to uh, focus on. Alhamdulillah, again, going back to the... Um, thinking, having the mindset of you're not doing this for yourself, you're not doing this for A, B, and C, you're doing it for Allah. From the get-go, Allah Ta'ala had blessed the people and the people involved in this project to really look at, uh, look at it uh, with a clear conscience and clear mind. Um, so before they uh, decide to sign the contract, they took a, a sort of a master plan and presented it to the city of Oakley. And the city of Oakley was ecstatic. When they saw that something like this, who's going to be helping the elderly, because we all know every city in the state of California, for that matter, the entire country, is just deprived from, um, number one is residential, affordable residential housing, especially when it comes to the elderly. So when they saw this, this was a big plus for us. Um, and, and of course the rest of it, and once, we, once they saw that this has park, it has youth in mind, it has the elderly in mind, it is going to have uh, functional halls for rental and all these things, yeah, they saw this is not a burden on the city. Actually this is an asset towards the city. So Alhamdulillah, the response was extremely positive. So we moved on. So a lot of, uh, this goes back to the slide uh, one before. Uh, as the sister asked and some of the brothers asked, where are we? Um, so to answer that question is, 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 is through the things we do. SubhanAllah, this center here, MCC, uh, I was a neighbor of this MCC for a number of years, so I'm familiar with the events that takes place here. It's these type of services that distinguishes one center from the other center. It, again, it all goes back to how are you going to serve the Ummah? So Alhamdulillah, we're doing that, and we want to do that, and we want to grow with those services, and we want to expand and learn from you and hear from you, and things that we may have not have on this list. Uh, number one is, now we have a masalla that anybody can go and pray any times. And we have a brother who just moved in the neighborhood. Mashallah, he takes his little boy for uh, Zohar prayers. 
It's just the two of them. Sometimes other people join. Sometimes, you know, from Maghreb or Asia, maybe one or two more other people. But Fajr, sometimes the group is a little bigger. I think we're about 15 now, alhamdulillah. So, so that opportunity now exists. There was no opportunity there. In that corner, you may have to go to uh, Antioch or Brentwood. So alhamdulillah, now this community has masala. So Allah Ta'ala is growing. Um, Islam's reach everywhere. Um, community garden, we touched upon that. This is the highlight for those brothers who were with us part of that Quran class. Like I said, they run towards those raised garden conversations. They're so great to just listen. Uh, I'm, sh I'm putting shade on this one. I'm not putting shade on this. So that's half of our conversation on how to grow <laughs> leaks. But anyway, I don't want to digress. Uh, Fajr classes, as I mentioned many times, um, uh, we have had uh, camping overnight. Uh, I think we were expecting, I mean, we were hoping for about 10 to 15 people. The last time it was 63 people that showed up. And we had a bonfire at the end of the evening. Nobody wanted to go sleep. Especially, I mean, older us, like that, we couldn't do it. So we had to go to sleep. But the, the youngsters, they stayed up. They enjoyed. So this is an opportunity for centers like this. If you have a Boy Scout, if you have gatherings, uh, RCC's, the RCC's door is open for you. You can definitely come in and do these things. A space for senior gathering. We have had many of those. We, I mean, we have images after images of just, um, it, was, it was incredible that this was a couple of years ago, one of them, that um, uh, one of the brothers was very good, very eloquent in poetry, and he just started giving poetry. And it was incredible, and you can see others who really, you know, it was, it was almost a competition, you know, of poetry, so alhamdulillah. These are all the services that RCC w wishes to continue and, and inshallah grow upon. So the last item is, um, obviously nothing gets done, first of all, without Allah's will, His blessing, and then through Allah, the, uh, like I said, the visionaries who will have that dream and who will get us, the soldiers, to run and do things and, and be here today uh, simply to have a place that we, now we can pray, we can garden, we can camp, we can do all these things. But again, it, 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 it doesn't hint here. Um, it's very clear to where many centers like these, a lot of efforts are needed. A lot of different folks, a lot of joining of the powers and teams and conversations that need to take place. So what we are asking and requesting of you is obviously, first of all, sincere dua. Next time you're in your sajda, I'm sure you're making a whole bunch of, I, I do. I, I, my session sometimes becomes too long. And, and the Imam comes up, I go, I wish it was a little longer <laughs> because I'm not done. I still have two things to ask for. So please, next time in your sajda, make dua for RCC. Because this may be that one dua that Allah accepts it for you. And inshallah, when we are in front of Allah and Allah brings it to our face, because well, remember, you made that dua for this project. Every salawat every zakat, everything that that center de did and does is now you're part of it and you're gaining all this. So make sincere dua for us, please. Financial support, obviously projects like these are huge. Um, there's a lot involved. Uh, we're simply at, at the basics. Uh, we've, we've started, we've made tremendous progress um, uh, working with a very reputable um, firm. Uh, we're almost done with the design and all that. All we're working basically is just the last few touches of how beautiful should the, our masjid be. Simply, the uh, I was just um, sharing with the brothers um, uh, something that I saw online from um, a masjid in um, Singapore. SubhanAllah, I was blown. I was like, this is incredible. Literally, when, when making wudu and uh, washing your feet, um, there's something that pops up. You put your feet down without having to raise your feet. I don't know how many of you, uh, you have this problem. In the mornings, it's hard to raise your feet on the sink and make with them. But imagine if you're 70, 80, 90 years old. So this, this gadget, it makes it easy for, uh, for that to happen. So anyway, without me too much getting into the details, financial support is uh, definitely needed. We're at primary stages. We have some cards that has to pay off. We, we want to take care of these um, uh, initial um, uh, expenses. The other, uh, even more important, is becoming an advocate. Like I said, this takes, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. It takes everybody in Bay Area to, to make this project come to fruition. 
Uh, we don't have just the Bay Area. We have brothers who have moved, now moved away. They're still in contact with us. They're still supportive of this project. They really, their heart is um, clinked with this project because of what it delivers and what it um, uh, ultimately, uh, the khidma or the services that it delivers. Uh, so please be our advocate. Talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends, talk to your sisters, families. The next conversation you have, the next gathering you have, let it be about Rahma Community Center. Shed some light. Who knows, Allah will accept from you just a few minutes that you spend and talk with them about such a beautiful project. Um, so again, Jazakum Allah Khairin for your time and uh, your efforts. At this point, I think uh, we are at the question and answer session. I'll pass the mic. Jazakallah khair, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you for being here and uh, patiently listening. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala count it in, in, uh, in, in your hasanat. I uh, wanted to make sure that inshallah I take this time to recognize and thank uh, our dearest sister, uh, uh, Sister Farzana, who is in our board. Um, I know she had some other functions to, to attend, so Jazakallah khair for being here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, may Allah reward you, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the best of this world and the hereafter. The reason why I did mention this is for the sisters, if you like, she comes here often, so if you have any questions, make sure you know who to go to. So Sister Farzana right here is in our board. She you know, does a lot of wonderful work. MashaAllah, may Allah bless her, Jazakallah khair. So that, if that being said, so there was a lot that was said, and I just wanna say that what makes this project a little bit different than the others? Just, I want you to imagine this. So you have a center that has over 110 uh, units, right? That is for senior citizens and, and others. You have retail for people who can, inshallah ta'ala, come. Because the Prophet ﷺ built the masjid and then, and then showed us the way to the market, subhanAllah, right? So you have your, your, your center, you, you have your units, you have your market, you have your masjid. And imagine our grandparents and parents and maybe ourselves, inshaAllah ta'ala, if Allah gives us that, that uh, uh, benefit, inshaAllah, to live there and when you need, walk to the masjid to catch five daily salah. How many of our parents or grandparents, seniors, are able to do that. Some of them don't have the right, some of them cannot drive, and even though their heart longs to go to the masjid, it's not always possible. So anyway, I'll leave it right here, and I'll open it up for question and answer. Uh, Insha'Allah ta'ala, uh, please, uh, you know, uh, uh, feel free, and Insha'Allah we'll go from there. If we have time, then we'll uh, see what we can do. Jazakallah khair. Go ahead. Jazakallah khair. We have plenty of time, Hamdlaw, uh, about 45 minutes. So raise your hand, inshallah. I'll come over to your mic. Those who are watching from home, just type your chat, uh, message into the chat box and we'll uh, get it to the board, inshallah. So if you have any questions, just raise your hand, please, and I'll come over with the mic. Inshallah, your presentation was so good. Uh, it's, it's really insightful, uh, especially the elderly care. Uh, very excited to learn about that. Uh, as many of you know, MCC did try last August to to uh, purchase uh, some land and ha had a lot of the vision for the that that you all have. Uh, we weren't able to finalize on the land for a variety of reasons, uh, but we're very excited to be sharing this vision with you. It's needed all over again. Mashallah. Anyone? Okay. Khair. Do you want to show? Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Jazakallah khairan for... I'm, I'm sorry, I missed the vast majority of the presentation. For some reason, I heard the announcement that this, this program started at 7.30 to this evening instead of 7 o'clock. So please excuse my tardiness. Um, I, if you can just talk a bit more about your vision of having like kind of the multi-generational uh, interaction um, as part of your vision, that would be very helpful for me because I think it just is an important part of aging, right? To have elders also being able to just share their wisdom and interface with people who are younger, right? And then vice versa. Um, so we could just talk a bit more about that. 
in, inshallah, so on, <laughs> I have brother Abdul Hadi here who is part of our board. May Allah bless him. He has done a lot of work and he has ton of knowledge. Alhamdulillah, uh, Rabbil And also uh, brother here, uh, brother Muhib, uh, to answer those, that question. But I actually wanted to, to uh, just, just if possible, briefly tell you my personal experience. And I think that's what we, we have already kind of started that. But insha'Allah ta'ala, hopefully we can take it to the next level. So we try our best to do some senior citizen kind of gatherings, if you will. And subhanAllah, so one of these gatherings, I was there. And when you see our elders, subhanAllah, Allah has blessed these individuals to a certain point, to a certain level that sometimes we don't really see or get the opportunity to actually hear. So, I actually became very emotional <laughs> when, when, I, when I started hearing their stories and what they, 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 they went through. And then I was further moved, subhanAllah, by, as the brother said, by how they competed with each other on poetry, linguistics, and literature. And you could see essentially, literally, I saw my professors, right? My teachers right there among them. So here I am, I'm just sitting, I'm just soaking this up. And I was telling the brother, are we recording this? We should be. If we're not, we should be. This should be shared with people. And so that is my personal little kind of a, a, a experience. But it would be beautiful if we can, inshallah ta'ala, make sure that we, we point out and, and find out what these senior citizens, for example, what are they uh, 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 expert at? What are they good at? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given each and every one of us something beautiful. And if we can find that crystal in, in that individual and then direct them to share that with the rest of the community, specifically the youth, specifically different generations, so we can learn from that. We can, inshallah, excel in that. So that's my personal, uh, you know, uh, experience. Hopefully you guys can take it from here. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ba'd. Thank you, brother, for the question. <laughs> You're actually, the question actually shows the background of what is the thinking behind. Um, this project is unlike any other project in the sense that we're thinking 5, 10, 15 or more years down the road. So you have to imagine you have to imagine what the growth of our community will be in those many years. And what kind of facilities do you think we would need that our kids would be asking for? Um, for example, uh, a standard playground or a standard gym. They may not necessarily be satisfied with one small facility and so forth. But the point I want to get across is that in our communities, very few people think long term. They don't want to think, um, granted, there is, I should say the other way around to be politically correct. Very few people have the vision or the, you know, they want to think ahead, so to say. Uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with when I say us, I'm talking with the whole Muslim community because it will benefit the whole Bay Area in one way or another. Um, when we found this uh, parcel, which was big enough, that we wanted to address the needs of every community. So your question was, what's the relationship or the interaction, am I, if I'm correct, between different members of the community? Am I correct? Is that what your question was? Yes. Exactly. Um, 
so with the, some of these solutions, you know, the, the, the problems that we wanted to solve with this was real life problems. Uh, some of the example that Brother um, Maheb mentioned is that we have our elderly, Alhamdulillah, my parents are alive. They're very close to where I live, a walking distance. We're there, or my kids or our siblings are always there. But something that we cannot fulfill their need is interaction with their own age groups. We cannot fulfill that. But how can we fulfill that? This facility right here in this diagram, if you can see these gray buildings right here, these are the senior housing. And this green one is senior center. So they're kind of grouped in the sense the where they're gonna be interacting with one another, but they're not too far from the school right here, or the playground, or the gym, or the masjid. So we're imagining, for example, the grandpa's living here, or grandma, grandpa's living here, and some youth group, they can come actually and serve them, and vice versa, there are some teachers or um, academics who can do after school program and help the kids in that sense. Um, so those are, this facility, uh, another thing that I would like to clarify is that these senior housing are independent senior housing. They're not a facility where they're not able to take care of themselves. These are for active seniors who are able to walk to the masjid. And in fact, this is the, the distinguishing factor of where people want to be living here because they would like to live I mean, in a community where they're interacting with other Muslims and they're able to walk to the masjid and pray five times a day. Uh, and of course, interact with the, their grandkids and so on and so forth. Um, I'm gonna pause there and I hope I have answered your question. Sure. Yeah. Have you thought about, for instance, in, this, in these facilities having not just only uh, our seniors um, and our elders, but having, for instance, you know, a student, some, some students living in the same, same building? Um, I mean, my wife and I were talking earlier about just the necessity of them to be able to interact with people who are younger. Right, and, and like that multi-generational interaction. Um, and there's some level of concern that we were talking about earlier today, like if all the elders are almost siloed off, that may not be necessarily the healthiest dynamic for, you know, for a project. Um, you actually want younger like grandchildren and learning from the elders and vice versa. But have you thought about, for instance, like lower income families being able to live um, you know, in, a, in, the same, in the same building, not just having only independent elders. So, so my, my, my understanding, and you guys can correct me, my understanding was that these facilities are in a way where, for example, if a grandparents want to live, for example, with their grandson or granddaughter, that's how it's going to function. I know personally one of my friends from MCA community. I grew up in MCA, so that's my community, alhamdulillah. But I know one of my friends, and his son grew up with me. He used to be, you know, subhanAllah, we used to hold him. And uh, last I asked, I said, where is your son? He said, alhamdulillah, he's in Sacramento. What is he doing in Sacramento? He goes, alhamdulillah. We send him to serve his grandparents. His grandparents live there. We sent him there. He lives there. He learns from them and he serves them. Say alhamdulillah. That is, that was my understanding, is that to have something where essentially if that is possible then we can do that. And then on top of that we're hoping to have a very, even though we don't have a specific building for it, we're hoping to have a equally aggressive youth center and youth program. And inshallah, when we get there, the idea is to use the wealth of the seniors and of the youth, and inshallah, with brothers like you and families like you, 
coming with these ideas will inshallah make sure that we put them together so they can benefit from each other because as my you know friend's uh, son he says he's the muscle for them and they're the brain for him <laughs> so he gets to, he gets the wisdom from them but when they can't move stuff he's the muscle so inshallah hopefully that's what we're trying to do here but because of the 14 acre kind of limit subhanallah originally it's like 14 acres of land you know we're gonna do everything there and then when you actually put stuff together it's like uh, we need a little bit more space right so uh, on this point by the way if you know someone we're actually looking for a Muslim brother or sister a family that can help us if possible secure and buy the uh, the the uh, plot next to us it's empty it's there if it's possible then they can hold it for us but I'll leave it right there inshallah ta'ala and we'll go from there Jazakallah for the question wonderful question but I just want to sort of um, give you my experience um, I, I attend Masjid um, al in Concord um, even though I don't live there but I attend there and I've taken my kids there for a number of years simply because there's a group of us uh, we, call our, we call ourselves father and son soccer so we've, we in that group have, have had kids 80 years old to men who are almost 80 and we all play soccer so that is a, that, this is an example of those type of activities inshallah someday we will have at this site uh, I'm just giving you the soccer example there's others um, the brother mentioned the poetry there's a lot of people who love poetry I do too maybe I will sit with one of those guys and uh, learn from them so Jazakallah Khair if I may go ahead let me get you the mic sister Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If um, in May, uh, as being involved in a part of us uh, in this project, um, we already have some of these multi generational uh, activities. One of those uh, that I have witnessed, and maybe from mostly, <laughs> um, it's the, the garden that uh, male a blessed uh, brother, um, Panshiri, who passed away. When he started it, there were other youths, okay, you bring the dirt, you bring the soil here, you throw it here, you put, this is how you make the flower bed and, and all that. Um, or dig right here, this is a great place for um, starting a, a pomegranate tree. This, this is basically the youth that did the digging and they started the garden, but with his instructions. So that was some, something that, of course, the youth could learn. And as well as um, the project for the uh, canopy, the, where the masala is, uh, it took a lot of hours, many hours, long hours. Uh, the brothers were there on their weekends, um, working, um, making the, the canopy. And of course, with the elders' um, experience, how to build it, the youth were built, making the cement and throwing it and all that. So it has already started. Uh, and of course, with the vision coming forth um, with each and every aspect, um, I was involved with an Islamic school back in Virginia and the East Coast, and we utilized some of our um, retired sisters who were uh, who taught at the schools before. They were familiar with the curriculum, so they would come and volunteer either one-on-one -on -one with the students who were weak or days that we missed or didn't have enough um, substitute teachers. So, and there are so many possibilities with that multi-generational um, experiences. Inshallah, we are all hopeful that it is with every aspect of this project that could be, um, inshallah, on, uh, I mean, the vision is there, inshallah, it will happen. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu oh. alaikum. Uh, okay. Thank, I could say much, you know, thank you. It's very interesting. Um, I appreciate it. Um, I have a couple questions. So first, um, 
Do the buildings that you're showing in this rendering, do they exist currently? Are they, okay, so they're gonna be built. So then my second question is, um, what it, so when you say you're seeking entitlement from the city, is this gonna be like a phase, like is your CEQA, is it encompassing the entire project or is it just the mosque? And like, what is the process? So like, I think that, I'll just say, I could keep going, but I'll just stop there. <laughs> MashaAllah, you use the right wordings. So you must be having some ex experience already. So Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah uh, khair. I want to quickly come back to your question. And then that's interesting, inshallah. It, by the way, uh, some of these senior housing are one, two, and three. So we have flavors. In other words, if seniors wants to have somebody with them, they could have two bedroom and a three bedroom. That's one. Two, this building right here in orange, the top, the orange part is family housing. Yes. And then the bottom is the retail. So we are imagining teachers or whoever that is going to be having kids and whatever, they would be perfect candidate to live here. Um, And my, my sort of additional question, you know, regarding that is just, so depending on how you answer, I'm just curious, like, what, how you're envisioning the housing project, like, because we're obviously in a moment in California where the state is really encouraging building housing, so whether it's senior housing or multifamily housing, I mean, I don't, I, yeah, so I, ha I do have experience, because I'm, I'm the land use attorney who... <laughs> MashaAllah, MashaAllah, um, so, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So I, I, I'm really interested in developments. I work on developments. It's something that I'm, I genuinely enjoy and I like working on it. I like building housing and entitling a project. Um, so I, I'm just curious, yeah, like how you're envisioning that the actual housing development project. Is it rental units? Is it is it going to be for sale? Is it a deed? You know, what kind of, but maybe that's too in the weeds, so we don't have to get into that now. So um, with a project like this, we are very small people <laughs> compared to this project, very small. But when you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He wants to do it, eh, He will use anybody to do it, to make it happen. How? That's one of the signs. We did a presentation like this uh, in San Ramon, maybe pre-COVID, and over there, sister said, you know what? I work in this adjacent nearby city. I'm the director of public works there, director of planning department. Maybe I can help you. So, alhamdulillah, that was a blessing. And alhamdulillah, in this gathering, we have somebody who has experience with a phase that is upcoming. To inshallah. Um, so, to answer your question, when you're dealing with this stuff with people who have no background, you're learning things and all that stuff. There's a billion questions that you need to answer. So the way or we're tackling it is we want to plan what is gonna be happening. Answer those kind of questions in terms of need of the community that we should take into consideration in the planning of it. And as far as she asked the question, how are we going to do this? It's very important. If we want to build one little shack over there, the process with the city to get this approved is the same if you want to have five buildings or the whole thing. So we said, okay, if that's the case, then let us plan for the whole thing, master plan the whole site, and then build it in phases. So right now we are in the process of uh, we've pr finished the programming. We're, we're, we know how many units of this and that and square footage of this and that and all that. And just now we finished with zeroing in the location of the buildings. There is some change compared to this. There are some changes. Um, <clears throat> the next side, the next thing is to get the storm drain and the grading uh, correlated to meet whether it's meeting the requirement or not. So one thing that we would like to do in here is to process the storm drain within site. 
Uh, so we don't have to build to the storm drain of the city, connect to the storm of the city, which is further out. And Alhamdulillah, the land in here, this particular place is very porous. And uh, the development behind, see these apartment white ones there? That's a new development that has happened. Can you guys see? No. So that is a new uh, development of 170 units that just got built there, which is, brother, by the way, that's affordable, has affordable housing in there. 107 units, walking distance, right, you can see it from here. And they're similar on the other side of the highway. Uh, my train of thought, so, um, they, they've already done the same thing as we are, would like to do. They are containing the storm drain within the site. So the condition of the soil is feasible to be able to do that. Um, of course, definitely it'll be phased. It'll be definitely phased. Um, and inshallah, our first phase will be this multi-purpose gym, uh, which has classrooms, admin office, uh, multi-purpose rooms, and gym. This gym is kind of put as you, I mean, it's right next to the school, so that during school hours, it's serving the needs of the students. So it has a cafeteria in here, it has a kitchen, uh, and area for food service. But then after hours or after school, then it is open to the whole community right next door. These are the things that we had to figure out and process it and position it and so forth. And then there's a lot of regulations that you have to meet, a lot of regulations. For example, one, uh, I'll just say it this way, that the school regulation requires that, that they have to be fenced, so to say. So we have to put these relational or uh, buildings that are related to one another in such a way so that you can fence it. Uh, similarly, we don't want, for example, the elder disease to be walking from one side to another or further out to go to senior center, for example. Things of that nature. And at the same time, we wanted the retail to be in a center location. Also, the masjid to be in a center location. So these are the kind of questions that we had to answer or uh, think about. I know that question is very involved, so inshallah we'll be talking. <laughs> and uh, by the way, the CEQA uh, process, uh, right now we are, uh, uh, we have architectural consultant involved uh, in civil engineering, traffic study, um, survey uh, the site and, and then just starting getting, getting to send out the contract for uh, geotechnical. Uh, so the CEQA which is after we have submitted a complete package to the city, when they deem it complete, then they will start the CEQA which we will inshallah be involving. Um, not at this point, not at this point. Well, we need your help, <laughs> okay? <laughs> yeah, so she's kind of referring to a certain uh, housing ele element or affordable housing, exactly. Yeah, so we are taking advantage of some of those. Yeah, meaning on this senior housing, first of all, the height of these buildings are limited in the city. So when you're offering additional affordable housing, then you can get a free card for something. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Right. So, inshallah, we're using some of it for uh, the additional height. Uh, and so on. So, inshallah, we'll more to come. But, okay. Yes, yeah, Salam alaikum. Um, I, I missed the presentation, so I'm, I'm sorry if this is repetitive. And this is sort of going off of um, my husband's. Uh, inquiry. Um, I'm just going to take it a little bit further and I know that there's a lot of planning happening so um, I say this humbly I, I understand uh, but since you are submitting uh, plans is it I'm, I'm going to take it a step further to say is it possible to consider rather than because one of the issues we have is that um, we've segregated age groups and 
to some extent, the models that we have right now very much continue to segregate, right? We have long-term care facilities, we have senior housing, we have a senior center. And I'm going to suggest based on research, extensive research that's happening, and as you know, the numbers are staggering and the, uh, the number of people who are going to be 65 and over in the next few years, and the needs are going to continue to increase. So I'm going to suggest that perhaps if you'd consider, rather than having to do these segregated um, buildings, can each building have within it the multi-use, like um, multi-family, senior, senior um, units, so on and so forth. And this is a, a very long-term thought, um, and the reason is because uh, loneliness, number one, loneliness is um, actually an epidemic now um, here, actually throughout the world. And so what happens when someone who is 75 or 80, um, or even younger, perhaps, uh, loses their spouse? and then they're alone. Um, they're isolated still in a building like that. And so what I would suggest is if you have uh, families living within the same unit, there is something that naturally happens, which is uh, the consideration of your neighbor. Um, and, and I think, I, I truly believe that's actually a model that we've had many generations in the past. And I think we're trying to come back to that for, for the reasons that you know our families are very small. Um, people are um, uh, quite isolated in our communities, as you know. Um, and I think, I don't know, I wonder what the cost um, benefits would be for doing something like that. And I, I would even suggest the same thing for the senior center. I would, I would suggest making that an intergenerational center that can be used by many people at the same time. It doesn't have to be necessarily a senior center, but the facilities can accommodate aging Muslims in addition to our youth at the same time. So I have a lot of thoughts around this and I'd be happy to talk offline um, as well. So Bismillah, um, when you're designing something, there's many ways to design it, right? And there's always trade-offs. When you're designing something, there's always trade-offs. You fix one problem, it may cause another problem. So, <clears throat> Yes, for example, imagine the seniors are there and then one unit has kids, young kids. Uh, I can tell you that from experience. <laughs> my dad or my kids or our, you know, some family members who have young kids, they go there. He doesn't like this, this <laughs> high-pitched town. He does not like it. <laughs> Either he walks away or says, <laughs> quiet this person down. So they're very sensitive. The elderly, when they go to certain age, they become very sensitive to certain things. Noise and this and that. So, uh, but at the same time, for example, let's say uh, losing a spouse. We do have, in, you know, throughout the, our experience when we are presenting, there are people who show their interest in the senior housing and they come with different backgrounds. And some of them are single, people or single spouse or person who are interested. But the way we are addressing it is with multi-bedroom solution. So for example, maybe two sisters can get together and uh, share a two bedroom, so they're not alone. Or maybe uh, a grandma and one of their kids living the same unit. Um, but to mix them together, or families, young kids, and elderly, uh, we may cause other problems. But, yeah, please. Uh huh. We'd be interested in that, definitely. I. I really, really appreciate that. Jazakallah khair, may Allah bless you for bringing that up. If you can, inshallah, if you can make sure that we exchange contacts, and inshallah, we'd love to hear from both of you, because it, right now, I always tell these brothers, they're more like, it's okay, it's okay, right? Right now is the best time. So if we're able to, I'm not a techie, I don't know all that stuff that you know, sister, so, so sometimes they have to tell me, you don't know, Jashish, you know, we have to do our thing. But if possible, 
we would be more than happy to make sure that we will do whatever we can to facilitate that because that's something that is, you know, any good feedback that we can get is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam in its entirety is nasiha. If we can take that nasiha and learn from it and benefit ourselves and benefit the community, not only do you both get the reward, but we all benefit from it, inshaAllah ta'ala. Jazakallah khair. The other sister, mashaAllah, may Allah bless you and all of you brothers that may be in some you know, a field that can benefit us, please try to reach out to us. I was, the whole time I was like, was like, this is so cool. She's actually excited about this. And, and when I'm in these meetings, right, in design and this and that, I'll tell you my personal experience, like I, because that's not my field. That's not my, my, my background. I have a hard time understanding what they're saying. You know, let alone being excited. But if you are in that field, like this sister, may Allah bless you. Jazakallah khair. Please make sure that, that, that we're in touch and we'll go from there. But I'll also seek from the rest of you. If you have something to offer, please do not hesitate. Inshallah, we'll benefit and you'll benefit. Jazakallah khair. Next. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I hate to bring the mood down a little bit, but again, mashallah, beautiful project. May Allah reward you guys. But my concern is, again, I, I drive around, you know, different massage in the Bay Area, and I feel like the cost and the efforts would have been better or more rewarding if we helped other communities in the Bay Area. Mashallah, I go to Oak Massage in Oakland and San Francisco and Richmond, and they're packed, but the massage are not in good, good you know, conditions. So I feel like, again, I understand the the concept here, but I feel like that it would be more rewarding, more ajr, if we helped other communities in the Bay Area and beyond to build these masajids. And I get it, you know, I feel like, but as, a, as Muslims, Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed us with, you know, being more, in more affluent communities like San Ramon, Pleasanton, even like MSA, MC, MCC. I feel like these organizations, these masajid, you guys, we have a, um, a duty to help other masajid in the, in the community. So my question is, what are we doing? What are we doing in outreach to these massages? Again, maybe this is not the question for this panel, but what are we doing to help out other communities in the Bay Area and beyond, to, again, to help with these facilities? Again, this is grand, but I feel like the efforts and the cost would have been more spent in other projects. So. Jazakallah khair, may Allah bless you for that question. I think it is, it is important for us to, just like you said, we need these type of stuff for all the communities. Most of the masajids, all, if possible, all the masajids should have something like that. There's no question about it. So I have been kind of preaching a little bit, you know, to, to, to the extent that I can to the, the masajids and khutbas, whatever. But the point is sometimes it is very, very tough when you go and you just talk about an idea, this is what we should be doing. So when I heard about this project, I kind of got excited the way the sister got excited about the, the, the sequel, right? So I was like, to the heads of the, the community, and some of them, you know, one brother got so tense, he said, if you believe on it so much, go, go create it. No, brother, I don't want to create another organization. I don't want to create another thing. I want you, because you're already there. I want you to help me, and I will help you create, a, a, you know, some kind of a department or something so, so we can do this. The reason why I bring this example is because a lot of time, again, it's the whole idea when you go to the community, they, they, there's a lot of pushback. And so I am actually excited that if possible, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with your help and, and others to create this model where essentially, for example, we don't necessarily uh, dip into inshallah, once it's built, it's self-sufficient. It brings enough you know, funds to, to take the center with a very good quality programming you know, to the next level. That's when we can go, for example, to all these other communities and say, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, we don't need anything from you, 
but we would like to offer something for you. Here's what we did, it worked. And now we're ready to help you do it again. I hope that answers your question. May Allah forgive us if we have it. Thank you, shukran. Okay, we have about five more minutes, inshallah. Sisters? Uh, yeah, didn't Somebody had the hand up? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Jazakallah khairan. Um, please forgive me if I'm going to say something that is not going to be what you want to hear. Unfortunately, in a lot of our massages, um, it's the, we are not short of resources, we are short of vision. We don't have a long-term vision, how we want to see, how we want to bring the youth uh, to be part of the community or the sisters be part of the community. Um, I went to a masjid in San Francisco and asked where the sisters area is. They said, well, we don't have one. I was very uh, taken back. I was upset. For days I was thinking about it. It's not that they didn't have the space or the the community didn't have the resources. It just wasn't there. It just back home mentality. I think if we bring the vision to uh, let all ages, uh, like we said, the multi uh, generational, to be involved in the massages, it will be a different Islamic center or a, a center for, for everywhere. Jazakallah khairan. Um, we have time. Jazakallah khair. Uh, brother, uh, if I may answer your question a little bit differently. Um, there are some communities who are very, very well off and they need something like this. They cannot have it. Do you know why? Exactly. Right. But at the same time, if this project is, through, is to, in its fruition, it'll have enough revenue to help those kind of communities. We're, unfortunately, those doesn't exist yet. So we're thinking maybe we can do what you're asking for down the road, inshallah. I want to come back to this sister, Barakallah uh, may Allah reward you. We do need to think a little bit different. We're open, definitely we're open. Without, you know, maybe you can shuffle things a little bit without changing a lot of things. But if there are studies that are done that perhaps can shed light on some problems or solution to some certain things. We're open, inshallah. Um, we need resources, human resources, financial resources, and so forth. So, you know, we need to know, for example, uh, are there any senior housing like this exists for Muslims, some other parts of the country? <laughs> and if they have done it, they've done it two different ways. So, what problems are they facing so we can take that into consideration in this design? Things of that nature. So, there's plenty of room for people who are interested in being part of this. There's plenty of room. Plenty of room. So, uh, whether they're online or hearing this later, uh, we're open for your participation in any way you can, inshallah ta'ala. Um, that's it. I'll give it to you. Yeah, Bismillah, we're, we're just four minutes away from pushing on uh, Adhan, but maybe really quickly, geographically, could you tell us where Oakley is? Because for those that are kind of in this area, the East Bay, we necessarily might not know where it is. So if you can you give us a kind of idea where in the Bay Area or Central Valley, how, where are we at here? Thank you, brother, for that question. Um, so we are in Pleasanton, California right now. And... <clears throat> Uh, if I may, I don't know if I have that luxury to hear. So uh, we're about Pleasant is right here. So we're about 40 miles away from it. Okay. But to answer your questions differently, uh, Oakley is right next to Antioch and uh, Brentwood. And people may have heard those cities. So we're north of Contra Costa, uh, next to the Delta. Um, Hopefully, inshallah, that helps. Highway 160. Yeah. Um, just a little more, uh, if I may, sorry. Uh, anyway, the, uh, we invite all of you, anybody, whether he's hearing, he, you're here or you're hearing this later on, we would love to host you and show you around. Okay? 
And, and you know how they say a picture is worth a thousand words, but seeing live is even more. So, yeah, so we will love for you to come. Uh, reach out to us, inshallah, brother uh, Hanif will give you a little information on that, how to reach to us. But we do welcome you to come and see the land, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, how much time do you have? Three minutes. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for every single one of you for being here. Your time, your effort. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to get to the next level in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With that being said, brothers and sisters, come, bring your parents, bring your family, bring your kids, and actually visit, be among the vineyards, look at, you know, how does 14 acre look like, walk around, you know, taste the grapes, look at the trees that someone already put in there and passed away. And every single bird or human that benefits from that, that person will get the reward, inshallah, till the day of judgment. We need you to be representative of us in whatever capacity that you can, whether that's your family, that's your masjid, that's your city, or whatever capacity that you have. With that being said, before inshallah our time is over, I want to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you the reward for being here and giving us this time. I want to thank Brother Munir. I want to thank MCC. Uh, I want to thank this community. I want to thank these brothers, mashallah, on the board, our sister, alhamdulillah, Rabbi Amin, for being here. So without you, understand nothing will get done. These ideas that you all brought in here, we would have never heard if you had not brought it up. So send us the, the, the research, we'll look at it and go from there. As you're praying, pray for us. Before I leave, there is an event that's coming up on Saturday, November 9th, 4.30. Get your inshallah tickets and support this event. You need information, get the information from our uh, table in the back. And there are some grapes as well for you to enjoy. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala.